Thomas Jefferson was a gardener. Now, he's remembered by history as one of the most important founding fathers of the United States. He wrote the Declaration of Independence. But amongst all of that, through his entire life, he was a gardener at heart. Join me today as I discuss how you can be a gardener, just like Thomas Jefferson. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and recently I discovered an amazing scholarly work, this book, Thomas Jefferson's Garden Book by Edwin Morris Betts. And this isn't a new book. It was actually published in the middle of the 20th century, so it's been around a long time. And Betts did amazing research, looking at all of Thomas Jefferson's writings to focus on the garden and how Thomas Jefferson approached gardening and how he documented gardening. And one of the reasons that we can now say that Thomas Jefferson was a gardener is because of this amazing book. And I'll put links to it below if you'd like to add it to your gardening library. Thomas Jefferson began a garden journal when he was 23 years old in 1766. And he continued adding to that garden journal for the next 58 years. And this is the first way that you can be a gardener like Thomas Jefferson. Start a garden journal. Or if you have one, add to it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Thomas Jefferson was an incredible gardener. He was just like you and me, growing things, trying new plants, but documenting the process. And in 1766, it was just beginning. He only had eight entries that year, beginning on March 30th, where he observes that the purple hyacinth has begun to bloom. And then until May 11th, it's just observations about flowers. And that's it. An entire year's worth of entries, just eight of them. But he had begun, and that's what you should consider. In 1767, I think it's pretty obvious that Thomas Jefferson has caught the gardening bug. He's writing consistently about what he's doing in the garden and all the things that he's trying and harvesting. And I think this is important to remember. I've seen it so often with new gardeners. Once you take gardening seriously, if you take the time to begin a journal and track what you're doing, well, then you start thinking more and more about gardening and you start planning and you start doing some research about your plants. And Thomas Jefferson was no different. As a young man, his first entry in 1767 was on February 20th, where he sowed some peas. And he doesn't write again in the journal for a couple weeks until March 9th, when he observes that the peas are up. And now he's writing every few days. He puts asparagus in on March 15th, and on 17th, he sows some more seeds. And this continues with his flowers and his vegetables. He even notes that on April 24th, those first peas that he sowed on February 20th, well, he harvested them and brought them to the table. And again, on May 28th, the peas that he had started on March 17th came to the table. This is a great example of how to document what you're doing, how to have a journal, to keep track of putting the seed in the ground, to harvesting it and eating it. And there are so many more great examples of his garden journal. This book is much more than that, however, because there are footnotes to everything that Thomas Jefferson writes. Explanations about the plants and how he had the process figured out in his garden. And on the days that he doesn't write, well, he might have written a letter to a friend. Today, we can just get online and look at YouTube videos or follow a blog, but in their day, they had to write letters to each other. And Thomas Jefferson did a lot of that, sharing with his friends what he was doing in the garden and getting back advice from more expert gardeners that would respond to some of his inquiries. This is a fascinating book, and it really shows how a young man like Thomas Jefferson, becomes interested in a subject and then just wants to do more of it. And I can attest to that transformation where gardening begins as an interest 
and then develops into a passion. This is my very first garden journal. I started it on the 25th of May, 2002. My very first entry was that I planted rhubarb. And I did a pretty good job of documenting what I sowed, what I harvested. I kept track of the weather all the way up to 15th of April, 2004. That's the last entry in this book. And that's when I had my last Master Gardener class. During those two years, I had developed a passion for gardening. So I sought out some of that additional information, like Thomas Jefferson. In my case, it was going to Colorado State University's Master Gardener program and taking a series of classes over five months, volunteering a few hundred hours as a volunteer, and then becoming a Master Gardener. And it really started with this first entry in my garden journal. There's another way that you can garden like Thomas Jefferson and not feel guilty about it. He's gardening like me too. He did a really good job keeping track of some of the things he was doing until 1770. He was a young lawyer, very busy, and he didn't have any entries in his garden journal for that year. And I've done the same thing. I've gone years without putting any entries in my journal. I still take photos, I might make videos, but Writing in the journal does take some extra effort. So if you don't do it, well, don't feel bad about it. Do it when you can. You might have a whole year or more where you just can't get to the journal. But when you do get back to it, like Thomas Jefferson did in 1771, well, then pick it right back up. By now, he was living in Monticello, and he's putting peas in the ground and looking at his flowers and harvesting. Now he's actually reached a new level where he's putting in the names of many of the different plants and flowers that he's putting into the garden. It's a new garden for him, Monticello. He's only lived in for a brief period. And so I find this beneficial as well because I've done the same thing. When you're starting a new garden, keep track of every plant that you put in it because I can guarantee you years later, You'll forget what you did. You might forget the names of the plants, but if you've documented it, well, you can always look back and know, ah, oh, that was the day that I did snapdragons. Another way that you can garden like Thomas Jefferson is to try new things and always be thinking about your future gardens. And he references that in 1774, his most complete year so far in the Garden Journal, where he documents a lot, and he has a lot of regular entries in here, beginning on March 10th, where again, he sows some peas. But on March 15th, there's something new. When he sowed the seeds to include radicchio, cabbage, lettuce, radishes, he distinguished them by sticking numbered sticks in the beds. And from that point forward, as he continues referencing the plants and how well they do, well, he references the numbers of the sticks. He's becoming relatively scientific and keeping track of how well his garden is doing. On March 31st, he laid off the ground to be leveled for a future garden. And then he gives the length of the garden, how wide it is, how long it is, its shape. He's putting in some trees and lots more fruiting plants. I think this is fantastic. Again, I do the same thing and there's no reason you shouldn't. As you plan out new garden space, write it down. And there's also some references in here with some maps of what that space looked like. I think that's fantastic. And he continues the garden talking about the people he talked with and who gave him different seeds of different plants. He's developing a gardening network of gardeners who know more than him, and they're sharing seeds back and forth. Another great way that you can garden like him. Create a network, find other gardeners out there that you can share seeds with and share information with. He's talking about using cow dung and water as a fertilizer. This is just fantastic stuff. He's keeping track of the weather all the way up to November 17th, when the first frost comes, to kill the plants in his garden. 
As you might imagine, Thomas Jefferson was pretty busy during the year 1776. So there aren't any garden journal entries for that year, but he was back again in 1777. And what was the first entry? On March 10th, he sowed peas. Yet another great example of how you can garden like Thomas Jefferson. When you find something that works, stick with it. Obviously, at Monticello, March 10th was the best day of the year to start his garden and start it with peas. So that's what he did every year. And that was the first entry in so many of the years of this journal. Past that point, he stays pretty busy. As he goes to Europe and as Secretary of State, there aren't a lot of entries. But periodically, during that entire time of the formative new United States, he still comes back periodically for an entry or two. Many years are missing, but he still puts some entries in. And one of the things that I find most amazing for Thomas Jefferson as a gardener is 1802. There's only two dates, May 11th and May 26th. But what's so special about this year is he was president of the United States. The third president, Thomas Jefferson, found enough time during the middle of his busy job to put a couple entries in, in 1802. After his presidency, Thomas Jefferson was able to spend a lot of time at Monticello and all of those years he documented pretty well. He wrote a lot of letters to a lot of world leaders who also had interest in gardening. They're just regular people. They're just like you and me, and they're sharing a passion. It doesn't matter that they're one of the most important people in the history of the United States. If you're a gardener, you're a gardener. Thomas Jefferson kept writing till the end of his life. His last entry in the Garden Journal was in the fall of 1824. His declining health really didn't allow him to do as much as he would have liked to in the garden, and he stopped putting entries into the Garden Journal. But he didn't stop spreading the message. In 1825, he helped establish the Botanical Garden at the University of Virginia. And I think this may be one of the most important lessons and one of the best ways that you can garden like Thomas Jefferson. Even if you're not actively participating in your own garden activities, you can spread the word. You can get others motivated. You can get others excited. You can grow new gardeners with the people around you, like Thomas Jefferson did. You can get involved with the community and help start gardens, like Thomas Jefferson did. And you can live your entire life knowing that you were a gardener and you had a good life. Gardeners are special people, and I'm very glad to include myself amongst a gardener like Thomas Jefferson. And I hope you're happy to include yourself as a gardener as well. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and share it with others who might also benefit. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.